Okay, so hello and welcome everyone. In this video, I'm gonna talk about the market for lemons. I'm gonna talk about asymmetric information, which comes from George Akerlof's 1979 paper. So suppose we have 100 potential sellers and 100 potential buyers of used cars. And we'll make the assumption that half the cars are bad. Okay, we'll say that sellers of used cars will accept an offer of $5,000 for a bad car or an offer of $11,000 for a good car. We'll assume buyers of used cars will pay $8,000 for a bad car, $12,000 for a good car. Okay, so there's gains from trade, right? If a buyer buys a bad used car and they know it's a bad used car, they'd pay $8,000 for it. The seller would want $5,000. There's $3,000 of economic surplus that can be gained between this maximal willingness to pay and the willingness to accept. What about for good cars? Well, the buyer would pay $12,000, seller would accept $11,000. So there's $1,000 of economic surplus to be bargained over between uh, those two types of buyers. Okay, let's make a further assumption that only the sellers can observe the quality of their car prior to purchase. That's pretty natural. So we'll assume only the sellers really know how good the car actually is. All right, so I wanna pose two questions. Suppose buyers are somehow aware of the quality of a given car, how many cars will trade and at what prices? All right, so suppose actually, let's just say somehow buyers are aware. So let's, let's undermine my assumption for a second and assume buyers actually do know, can distinguish between good and bad cars. What happens to this market? What's gonna be the price and how many cars trade? And then part two, part B, if buyers are unable to discern the quality of a car before purchase, how many cars trade and what'll be the price? So this is where there's asymmetric information in part B. Buyers have no idea what's a good car and what's a bad car. All right, so first off, let's answer part A. Remember, let's remind ourselves of the willingness to pay. Buyers are willing to pay $12,000 for a good car. Sellers would accept $11,000 for a good car. Buyers are willing to pay $8,000 for a bad car. Sellers are willing to accept $5,000 for a bad car. If there's full information, all cars trade because sellers of buyers of good cars identify good cars and then pay up to $12,000 for it. Buyers of bad cars identify bad cars and then are willing to pay up to $8,000 for it. What'll be the price? Well, we can't say exactly but we can say the price has to lie of a good car somewhere in the interval between 11,000 and 12,000. And the price of a bad car is gonna lie somewhere in the interval between 5,000 and 8,000. So if buyers have more bargaining power, the price will be closer to the seller's willingness to accept. If sellers have more bargaining power, the price will be closer to the buyer's willingness to pay. All right. Well, now let's think about the asymmetric information situation. So suppose now buyers can't discern the quality of a car, they can't tell good and bad cars apart. Now buyers are willing to pay only up to their valuation of a randomly selected car. Because if they can't tell the difference between good and bad cars, and they know half of them are good and half are bad, remember I said I had this assumption, half the cars are bad, so they can't tell the cars apart, but they know half are good and half are bad, then consumers are only gonna be willing to pay as much as they would for a randomly selected car. So the expected value is gonna be one half times 8,000 plus one half times 12,000, right? So this is gonna be the distribution of bad cars times the valuation of buyers for bad cars plus distribution of good cars times the valuation of buyers for good cars. So it's gonna be what? 8,000 times a half or times 50%, that's gonna be 4,000 plus one half times 12,000, 6,000, so 4,000 plus 6,000 is 10,000. Buyers would be willing to pay up to 10,000 for a randomly selected car. Okay, so buyers are willing to pay 10,000 for, for a random car, but wait a second, sellers of good cars want at least 11,000. So what's gonna happen? Well, as soon as sellers figure this out, they're gonna stop offering their good cars for sale. So there'll be no good cars offered for sale and we are gonna get market failure. Why? Because if buyers figure out, wait a second, the likelihood of getting a, a good car is not one half, it's zero. Now this affects the expected value, right? So now we'll calculate the expected value, the probability of getting a bad car times the valuation of a bad car, plus the probability of a good car times the valuation of a good car is just gonna be the expected value of getting a bad car. So now only bad cars trade. What's gonna be the price? 
Well, somewhere between 5,000 and 8,000, right? So this is very undesirable. What's going on here? We have the very prospect of bad cars is destroying the market for good cars. This is market failure due to asymmetric information. Specifically, this is a problem of adverse selection because buyers are worried about bad selection, about there being bad cars. They're unwilling to pay a high enough price for sellers of, of good cars to want to participate in the market. The market for bad cars drives away the market for good cars. So this happens in the used car market uh, and is actually like the motivation for having uh, third-party guarantees, for having Carfax, Carfox, right? for having warranties, different sorts of things to try to get around the asymmetric information problem, being able to look up the VIN of cars and so on and so forth. But there's other markets where adverse selection can be a problem and where you can think of a market for market for lemons. So anyway, um, hope you find this interesting. Like, subscribe, whatever. Have a good, <laughs> good day and good evening.